I paid $400 for this PS4 Pro 500 million special edition. This seller said that they took it to a repair shop for an overheating issue. They asked the repair shop for a cleaning and new thermal paste. After a few days, the repair shop said it was unfixable. So I bought it to make a video about it and see if I could fix it. So this, I feel like is actually a pretty good deal I got on this. It comes with the controller that's in really nice condition. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's definitely used, but it's really nice. It comes with the camera, the stand that looks to be fully working, the user manuals, and then it also has the power cable, the HDMI cable, and then even the stand for the camera. Now it also did have this game case in there. There's no game inside, but it did have the game case. I'm thinking maybe it's inside the console. So now we just have to figure out what's wrong with the console. I am curious which number this one is. Well, we got stuff rolling around in there already. That's not great. All right, so this is number 35,817 out of 50,000 of these made. Now it's important to note, this isn't called the 500 million edition because they made 500 million of them. That is something that I got in the comment section of one of the other videos that I did on one of these. They only made 50,000 of these. So while they're not the most rare special editions, they are pretty rare. Now this fell off when I lifted it up. This is a pretty common problem. The repair shop likely tore off this little tab right here. So this hard drive cover isn't gonna sit in there how it should. If I'm lucky, the tab will be in there and I can fix it, but I have a feeling it's probably gone. HDMI port is good. Okay, missing a screw already. That's no surprise from a repair shop who can't fix an overheating issue. And they have these little tabs back here. You just have to pry up a little bit and that will release the bottom cover. There we go, just like that. I guess there's only one of those tabs. Nope, there's another one up there. All right, so this case is in pretty good condition. It does have, you know, some scratching on it, but really not too bad. I just love these transparent shells. So cool. Oh, this one's pretty dirty on the inside. Have to take care of that at some point. Okay, what do we got? <laughs> Somebody numbered the screws, which I mean is fine. It just goes to show that they've probably never done this before. I think what I need to do first is try and plug this in and see if it even turns on. Oh. There's what was rolling around. We got a screw in there. <laughs> All right, it is now plugged into power. Nope, nothing. Immediately, I think probably the problem is that they tore off the power supply connector from the motherboard. I don't know though, let's get it opened up and find out. I do wanna be extra careful taking this thing apart just because it is a fairly rare special edition. This top shell's in pretty good condition. Definitely scratched on the outside, but not too bad. You can tell this thing's been used, but it's really in decent condition. Okay, power supply's coming out. Let's see if we're right. And of course we're right. I can already tell they tried to fix it and put epoxy around it. That's gonna be a pain. We do have the connector here. The connector wasn't connected even. Let's connect it and just see what it does. It probably still won't turn on, but might as well try it. Wouldn't that be crazy if the only thing is they forgot to connect the power supply? There's no way this is gonna start. Actually, please don't start because that's gonna be too short of a video. <laughs> this thing's totally starting up. Okay, the disc was inside. This is unbelievable. Oh, it's turning back off. Okay, restarting. Let me plug in an HDMI cable. No matter, even if this thing is working now, we're still gonna take it all the way apart and do a proper fix on it. I don't trust anything these guys did, so. We will not end the video right here, <laughs> even though it totally works fine. That is unbelievable. Come on. Good so far. All right, PS4 was turned off improperly. Got it. There we have it. So this repair shop was, I want to say so incompetent. That being said, sometimes repair shops do make mistakes, but it's really hard to, to forgive a mistake that where they did all the work to fix the connector on the board and then they didn't plug in the power supply and told the customer that it was unfixable. They could have just taken it back apart, found that the power supply was unplugged, plugged it in, and then the customer would have been happy. So. 
It's hard for me to say that this repair shop wasn't just simply incompetent. Now, I've only heard one side of the story. This is a repair shop that is a national chain that starts with a U, and that's all I'm gonna give. But I have to emphasize, we have only heard one side of the story, but also this repair shop is a repair shop that I've done multiple repairs from customers who sent it to them, and then the customer sent it to me because they were not able to fix it or they broke it worse or they made it unfixable. Okay, with all that being said, let's get this thing all the way apart and redo their work, make sure it's in good condition, so then if I decide to sell it, when I sell it, it's in great condition for the next owner. So now we have to get this power supply out without breaking this connector again. Honestly, it looks like they did a decent job. We'll take a look at it a little closer in a minute here, but it looks like they didn't do too bad of a job of replacing this connector. I'm gonna put my finger on the part that goes on the motherboard. Unfortunately, it's really hard to get this so you can see it. Let me zoom in here, see if we can get a better angle on it. I'm not sure that we can, but... So, I have my finger on the part that connects to the motherboard, my pliers on the part that connects to the power supply. Just gonna wiggle back and forth and pull up. Come on, got it. Okay, that's still connected to the board, so that's good. There you go, that's a good view of it. All right, now we can continue with the disassembly and see if they did anything else wrong on this thing. I bet the thermal paste is gonna be a problem. This is one of my favorite PS4 special editions. It's going for five to $600 right now on eBay, so if I can fix it pretty cheaply, I could possibly make one to $200 on it. But for this one, it's not really about whether I can make money. I just hate to see these cool special editions basically go unfixed. So I'm hoping to at least be able to fix it, and if I can make money on it, that's even better. So the one thing that kind of worries me is this, like, everything's bouncy. Seems like the board is bouncy, this is bouncy, which tells me that it might be bent. Let's take a look under it and see if we have any surprises under here. Oh, yeah, well, that was somewhere. I don't know where that came from, but I don't think it's where it was supposed to be. The plate doesn't look too bad. Yeah, it's a little bent, so we can bend that if we need to. The board shouldn't sit in here like this, though. Hard to see in this view, but it should sit down here just nice and flush and flat. So we got to figure that out. So we're missing one thermal pad. I hope this wasn't there. I don't think it was. So far, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, other than the thermal pad, that's a pretty major thing because these RAM chips get pretty warm. These thermal pads, how they work is there's a pad here and that connects with these little uh, dimples here on this plate, and this plate acts as a heat sink to spread out the heat and help remove it from the RAM chips themselves. Okay, let's get this board out and see what we find underneath. See if we can figure out why it's not sitting down there flush. Okay, well that's where we're missing one of the thermal pads. The thermal paste actually isn't as bad as I thought it would be. Definitely doesn't have the perfect amount though, obviously. And other than that, not too bad, but that's a major problem right there. Still kind of bouncy here, and that... Oh yeah, that's because they didn't screw the plate down, okay? <laughs> All sorts of surprises here, and I'm glad I decided to take this apart further. All right, so there's a screw there, a screw there, and maybe one more. It's hard for me to remember, it's been a long time since I've taken a Pro apart. A lot of times there's three screws, but it looks like maybe just those two are what holds this one down. Let's see what we have under here. Yeah, so these two, yep. This one right here goes in with the fan. You can tell because there's an arrow there. Same with this one, there's an arrow there. There's not an arrow there and there's not an arrow there. So these two do not go on when you put the fan on. Okay, and now we're down to the disk drive. Since we're down this far, we might as well take the disk drive out and give it a bit of a cleaning. The PS4 Pro does not have a disk drive that is married to the motherboard which is always handy. Not that that really matters for us since we're not replacing it. If we were replacing a disk drive that was married to the motherboard, we would also have to replace the little board that goes with the disk drive with a matched one. But luckily in this case, we're just cleaning this one, so that will be no problem. That just basically lifts straight up and out, 
And then we'll flip this over, basically remove this plate, this screw and this screw will enable that to lift up. Then we'll clean out the inside, clean the laser, clean the rollers, put it back together and get it back in the console. All right, now we have to be careful with this. I'm gonna lift up on the back and then kind of pull it this way. There's a little tab here and a little tab here that hold it down in the front. So we're just gonna lift like this, pull it forward and it's removed. So this one doesn't actually look too bad, but I'm still gonna remove these rollers. For this, you just have to pull up, just kind of a press fit into that little guide right there. And then pull up on this white bar to pull the other one out. And we just pull it out like that. And this one just pulls out up and push that way. There's a little gear right there that that fits inside of. This laser actually looks pretty good. I do have a cotton swab with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on it. Just gonna rub it around on that lens and let it air dry. And that's all we need to do for that. It didn't look dirty, so we don't really need to worry too much about it. And these, I'm also using a cotton swab, just rubbing back and forth. I'm pressing pretty hard just so I can hopefully get all of the dirt and debris off of it. And then same thing with this. We're just gonna let it air dry, but you don't wanna set this like on your workbench or anything, because your workbench, if it's anything like mine, is probably dirty. So what I like to do, just set it up there. And that Q-tip, and that Q-tip, just lost the bottom plate on that, but okay, we're gonna set that right there. All right, where were we? So this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. Now these rollers, they're exactly the same on each end, so you don't need to keep track of them. It's fine however you wanna do it. We put this end in first, push it all the way on, press it into this bracket. Now we have the white bar we put in here. We have to twist it around till it fits in there. Put it in this side, same thing, twist it in, in until it fits. This side goes in this little, this little groove right here. Then we just push it in to that bracket. And now we're done. This should move up and down freely when you're done. Now I'm just gonna clean some more dirt from various parts of inside this disc drive. I like to clean this little piece right here. It gets pretty dirty. And then just along the edges and anywhere else I see any dirt. This isn't too bad inside, so I'm not super worried. I'm not gonna do the perfect cleaning job in here. Just wanna get enough dust out that there's not a bunch of dust floating around and getting all on the laser or dirtying up the discs or anything like that. Now for this piece, there's not really anything to clean on here. So we're just gonna put this back on. These little tabs slide under here, same with this one. So we need to point the front down and push in. So we're gonna point it, point it down, push in under those tabs and then just let it kind of move into place while we kind of wiggle it around. Make sure all the tabs go where they need to. And there we go. When you've done it right, it will sit nice and flush. There will be no play in it anywhere. And these screws will just go in and keep it tightened down. They won't actually pull the plate down. The plate should fit nice and flat and flush. I'm gonna use some compressed air, blow off the top of this, and then the disk drive will be ready to reinstall back into the console. I went ahead and just used compressed air to clean off all the rest of the inside of this. So it is looking pretty good right now. Not perfect, but pretty good. Now I'm about ready to put this plate on, but I need to remove these two screws first because these go on after the plate. I'm glad I started explaining that because I almost totally forgot to remove these. So the reason the seller took this to a repair shop is because it was overheating. They did replace the thermal paste, but they didn't fix one of the main things that causes overheating, and that is this heat sink right here. Now this one is definitely not the most plugged one I've ever seen, but you can see, especially over here, it's plugging up over here, it's plugging up down here, and it's plugging up right here. So yet another thing that this repair shop failed to do that is a super common problem or a super common thing that causes overheating. So let's get that cleaned up now because this thing is definitely not gonna overheat when we're done with it. That's the thing about this too is this is super easy to do. Just take a little brush, brush this out. If it's coated really bad, you can just grab it here like this. You can just grab it and remove it and almost all of it comes off. So that gets all the loose stuff. Then we will use some compressed air to blow through the fins and that will clean them completely. And 
And there we go, nice and clean. Now we can install the heat sink. There we go. See how it sits down there nice and flat now? There we go. Now it's not bouncing around. It's just nice and flat how it should be. All right, now we're gonna clean up these thermal pads. Right now there's a bunch of kind of just hair, dirt, debris on them. So I'm gonna use some isopropyl alcohol and clean them up. That will help them kind of regain their stickiness. And this one is especially dirty. So we need to clean that one off really good. There we go. That is significantly better. Now hopefully it'll stick on that chip or on this uh, little metal heat sink better. Not amazing, but it is sticking there. All right, might as well remove this old thermal paste. I think the one thing they did, you know, okay on is the thermal paste application, but they definitely didn't put the perfect amount. We do have to fix this thermal paste problem. And we'll apply the perfect amount of thermal paste onto the chip. Oh man, we're almost out of thermal paste, but I think we have the perfect amount left. There we go. Let's have a look at this connector. I think it's pretty good, but I do want to take just a closer look at it. Okay, and that actually is a pretty decent job. I mean, it, it looks ugly, but it's actually on there pretty sturdy, and we know it works, so that's actually not too bad of a job. Okay, let's get this board installed and keep going on the assembly. And I do have a replacement thermal pad for this RAM chip. That is going to help this one stay nice and cool, if I can get it to stick. Let's clean it off a little bit. Sometimes they just don't stick well, but there's not much we can we can do about it always. I think this one's gonna do better with it being cleaned. Yep, at least part of it. All right, and now the top plate can go on. Just like that. And I do want to make sure all of these thermal pads are in the correct places, and they are. They all look good. Okay, now we are going to be sure to plug in the power supply. There we go. I still can't believe that's what was wrong with this. I mean, I'm glad I took it apart because there were other things that needed addressed, but I still can't believe that was the main thing and the reason they said it was unfixable. That is crazy to me. This might be might be the craziest, easiest fix ever. And the very last screw goes right there. Now we can put the covers on, plug it in, and make sure it still works. You know, after we clean it. This thing's got to look good so you can still see through it. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks so good. I wish there weren't so many scratches on this case, but that looks really good. And same thing here. Okay, let's see if it turns on. Come on, there we go. I was a little worried there for a second. Let's see if we have a picture on the screen. Of course we have a picture on the screen. Let's see how nice and smooth this disc goes in. I bet this is gonna look really nice. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's make sure it plays. And there we go. So we have fixed another special edition PlayStation 4 so it can go on and live a happy life. A while back I made another video trying to fix my first ever PlayStation 4 500 million edition on this channel. I'll put a link for that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I was able to fix it. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.